back to another edition of Force Friday, where we talk about Star Wars theories, characters, concepts, comparisons, analyzations, collectibles, and more. And today we're going to publish this episode a little early so that you could use it as a tool or hopefully a resource for tomorrow, which is actually the proper Force Friday, uh, not to be confused with my Force Friday, which is some sort of imitation knockoff, to be quite honest, but I was hoping it would come up in the Google searches, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Doesn't matter. The reason why we're going to do this is also because much like many of their marketing choices these days, it's confusing as to exactly what is coming out tomorrow versus what has been announced versus what's kind of going on in the ether. So I figured it was worth the time to try and get this done for you guys. And allow me to put emphasis on the word try because I have a thousand things going on because a truck ran over my phone yesterday and I'm trying to get some stuff off of it on and on and on it goes. But enough about my problems. So the Black Series. Let's start there. So it looks like one wave of figures is going to be released, and that's the Black Series 90 through 97, consisting of Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, which looks like largely a retool of previous Kylo Ren figures, if you ask me. Nothing really exceptional nor phenomenal, and I'm a little disappointed that there's no helmetless option. Now, I do get the impression that the helmet is going to be a big deal in this film, and that's cool, but I would have preferred the option. I think it's an easy thing to have done. It would have been nice to see it with the new kind of paint technology on the face, so a bit of a bummer. We then get Ray and Dio. Now, Dio, I think, largely is a misstep for Lucasfilm. I think they expected it to have a similar marketing and excitement reaction to BB-8, but it didn't. Nobody's talking about this thing, but they want it to matter because they're including it with Ray. So they do not want you to miss this thing. They want you to notice. Looks like Ray's gonna come with pretty much the same accessories she's come with in every release so far, and pretty much the same outfit, just in lighter shade. So once again, not a very exciting release. We're then getting the Sith Trooper. The Sith Trooper is by and large the same as the SDCC release, but it doesn't have the extra accessories. You're getting a limited amount of accessories, which I think is cool. I think it's cool to have these exclusives that give you a little bit more stuff, a little bit nicer packaging, and then when it comes to the main line, it's not exactly the same. Similar to the episode one, Obi-Wan, where they had the different hand gestures with the exclusive and the different packaging, and then, but you can still get the figure, you just lose out on a little bit of the kind of the sauce, you know? So I'm good with that. We then get Cal Kestis, which is a character from Fallen Jedi video game that's coming out, because this Force Friday is kind of celebrating that game, The Mandalorian and Episode 9. Looks like a well done figure. Looks pretty cool and stuff. I don't, you know, the problem is we don't have much of a connection to this character yet. So it's kind of like, it's, it's like, it's getting ahead of itself in that regard, you know, in my opinion. But it looks like it's going to come with a little, little friend, little droid friend and some sort of weapon. And it does look like a cool figure. It looks like a well done figure, I guess I should say. And then we're getting an off world Jawa, which I think is from the Mandalorian, which is pretty much going to be a retool of the one we already got or a redeco at the very least. And first order stormtrooper, which I can tell you, I don't really need any more of, but this does have improved elbows, which will get you slightly above 90 degrees rumor has it. And that engineering was first seen with the Galaxy's Edge Commander Pyre? Pyre? I'm not sure what the pronunciation is. I know I didn't care much about it. But those elbows have been trash for the First Order figures in the past, so it's nice to get something that's a little bit more advanced. And then the one that I saved for last, but certainly not least, is the Second Sister Inquisitor. From Jedi Fallen Order, but I think think it's the same one from Rebels? I'm not entirely sure, but it's being packaged with the Jedi Order stuff, or the Fallen Jedi Order stuff, rather. And this looks like a pretty cool character. She's got her helicopter lightsaber blade and a couple of different faceplate options, maybe. I'm not exactly sure what those are. And kind of a must-have for any sort of Empire or Sith fan. Now, all of this stuff seems pretty straightforward, right? Nothing seems confusing, and I would agree. So let's go ahead and get into the confusing element. And that is, they're all being released in two types of packaging. You're getting the standard sort of black and red release that we've all come to know and I think love for the most part is pretty sharp, but they're also coming in a white box with red backing known as the first edition release. All the figures are identical. The only thing different about them is indeed the packaging, which does look cool. I like the white and red with the black line work of the character on it. I, I like it as well. And it's also important to know that they're not exclusive, but they are supposedly more limited. So each character 
is getting basically two releases up front. And I might touch on this a bit broadly in a sit down Saturday soon. But as if that wasn't enough, they're also doing the Carbonized Collection. So these are a few of the characters released in another different deco of packaging with metallic paint application. Now these are exclusive. We get a metallic Mandalorian, and I'm using a lot of these pictures from JediBusiness.com. He does a great job in kind of keeping it all streamlined in terms of releases and news regarding Star Wars action figures. But I do like this metallic look of this Mandalorian. So that might be one that I get after. That's going to be a Target exclusive, which I can also tell you is not having any sort of midnight madness. They're just going to be opening at regular store hours. There's the Second Sister Inquisitor metallic release, which also looks pretty cool. And I like the way the blade looks. I'm not sure how that'll look in real life, but in the pictures, it looks nicer. That's going to be a GameStop exclusive. Then there's the Sith Trooper, which is an Amazon exclusive and has the metallic application, and that'll probably look really sharp, but I'm not sure how accurate it will look to the screen representation. You might be better off with the normal store representation in order to get the more screen-like look, because I don't think their, their armor is metallic. It's usually more of like that glossy look. And the First Order Jet Trooper, which is a Walmart exclusive, which I think is going to be part of the next wave of Black Series, which may be released on the same day, but he's numbered at 99. Now, as we move into the next wave of Black Series, we have seen images of a lot of these guys, and I've seen most of them from Yak Face on Instagram, to be honest. But there's a Luke Skywalker Yavin ceremony. We've also seen special packaging of this that's being released in the future at a European convention, I believe. But it's also important to know that this is supposed to get a mainline release with kind of the standard packaging. And what's interesting is this actually went up on Hasbro Pulse a couple days ago and then was taken down shortly thereafter. So congrats to the folks that were able to grab it during that little pocket, if they honored those purchases, that is. Finally, we're getting a Wedge Antilles, which I couldn't be more happy about. That's a character that deserves a lot more love than I feel like he gets. He was in all three of the original trilogy. He's earned his spot, you know what I mean? So so I'm happy to see that we're getting a wedge. Looks like it's largely going to be using the kind of Luke X-Wing body, maybe with some retooling. Hopefully they have a tendency to do that and then a different head, which does look good. And then we're also getting Jana from The Rise of Skywalker. That's a character I'm really interested in, whether or not she's going to have a tie to Finn or a tie to Lando, as rumors have speculated. Maybe a tie to all three. We don't quite know. But I do know a little bit of information about her, and we'll be covering that very soon. But I like her design, and the figure looks cool. It looks accurate as well. But it has a very Star Wars feel to me. And then lastly, the other figure that's been revealed is Cara Dune from The Mandalorian. A lot of people have a crush on this young lady in real life, so I'm sure they'll be happy to get a representation of her for the shelf. She looks a little bulky, but that might be accurate to how she looks in, in the show. I know she's a, you know, she's a strong woman, so I know she's got a big frame on her, but it'll be interesting to see exactly how that plays out in terms of accuracy which it may be, but the figure looks cool regardless. And look, I'm being careful about what I say because it looks like she could beat the otter box off of me. Looks like we're also getting a 3PO with the Chewbacca bandolier and I think the little guy that ends up kind of playing a part in all of that, but that's spoilery, so I don't want to get into that quite this second. And a few more pictures just recently surfaced. One was of a six inch Black Series Luke Skywalker with the kind of upgraded paint to the face application. This surfaced thanks to Fly Guy. And the other one is of a GameStop exclusive of a Black Series clone commander, Fox, which popped up on Reddit via Spragooprod, whatever that is, whoever that is rather, but that looks pretty wicked. I guess more information to come eventually. And then lastly, regarding Black Series, there's a few exclusives to be on the lookout for. So the Purge Trooper from Jedi Fallen Order is going to be a GameStop exclusive. People love their troopers. Troopers look cool in black. We all know this to be a fact. So that's one to be on the lookout for. The First Order Elite Snow Trooper is going to be available at Target. It's basically a snow trooper from the First Order with a cape. And capes are about as cool as black armor. Plus another trooper. And we all know we love troopers. It's just a cash cow, isn't it? So that'll be available at Target. And then the Collector Mystery Box will also be released at Target. Now this includes a hat, a pin, an elite snow trooper with a snow trooper comic. That's what it's supposed to be anyway. Some of it still remains a mystery. It's just this is kind of the word, at least to the best of my knowledge. And with that, we can go ahead and move into the vintage collection a bit. It does look like we're getting some cool stuff with that. We're getting Wave 6, 
which includes a Knight of Wren, finally. This will be our first three-dimensional representation of a Knight of Wren for our collection, so I'm super excited to get a hold of one of those. Obviously, another Ray, a Sith Jet Trooper, which is kind of interesting. I don't remember seeing that in the past, or maybe I saw it and just figured it was a Sith Trooper, but yeah. We're also getting a Zori figure, which is our first representation there. I'm sure a Black Series will be soon to follow, and a Luke Skywalker and X-Wing pilot, which I'm sure we all have a slew of at this point in our collecting careers. In addition to that, we're getting a few vehicles we're getting a vintage collection x-wing which is going to be nice to have you know it's been a while since we've got an updated x-wing we're also getting one of poe's new x-wing which he's kind of traded that black one in for an orange one it's a bit sleeker slightly different design i think i prefer the black one though to be honest and an atst raider from the mandalorian which is pretty much an atst with some different deco and a new figure and the figure is going to be a hard one for me to pass up i hate when they get me with vehicles they get me with the figure all the time I think we should also address the Bondi SH Figuart stuff. We're getting a Kylo Ren and a Rey, and they both look great, but it's like, come on. Like, neither one of these characters have that extravagant of a different design in either one of these films, or any of these films, really. So, well, I guess with the exception of Last Jedi, Rey looks kind of vastly different. But for the most part, they look very similar. So, like, let's just get some new stuff. I, I need SH Figuarts, I need you to do the Knights of Ren. Are you listening? And Hot Toys recently showed off their Mandalorian and IG-11, which look fantastic. But it looks like they got something behind the curtain as well to show at NYCC. And I'm sure there'll be a ton of stuff coming for that. So maybe we'll talk about that next week. And then lastly, just to round out the conversation, we're getting some role play items. Uh, and Kylo Ren's Force FX Elite lightsaber. Supposedly has 80 LED lights, removable blades, stand, collector coin, metal hilt. So for $2.99, I mean, it's, it's nice. It's probably nicer than the one I have, but I think the one I have is sufficient. Luke Skywalker's X-Wing helmet. I know a lot of people are into this collection, so that's supposed to be coming. The Incinerator Trooper helmet, I think, but that may not be available on Force Friday. And Boba Fett's Empire Strikes Back helmet, which I know a lot of people have been looking forward to, so that's pretty exciting for those folks. I've also heard that the Darth Vader Hyper Real figure is coming. I'm really anxious to get a chance to take a look at it and see just how far they were able to push that envelope at that price point. Point. I think the success of stuff like that will really dictate the direction that Hasbro goes in the years to come. So with that being said, I hope you find that useful. I hope you find it informative. I'm not sure how entertaining it was. It's been a rough day. My phone, Mac. Rest in peace. Happy hunting, and thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Take care.